how do you make the Wild Magic Barbarian even better? You multi-class it with some fighter. This is my Barbarian Fighter multi-class, and it's really simple to follow. As always, level by level, and a combat tutorial, and some items, so let's do this. Level 1, most important, is to start with Barbarian. So, we're going to jump here, and you want your stance to look something like this. You want 16 strength, 16 dex, 14 constitution, and then these have in any order of an 8, a 10, and a 10, just to keep things balanced. And with the proficiencies, you can take whatever. Okay, now, you can do this at any point you want. Um, it really depends on how you want to play the game. I personally would take Barbarian to level 3, which is what we're going to do. I would then multi-class into Fighter, and then I'll continue with Barbarian. So I'm going to do it in the order I would do it, but you are free to sprinkle in these, level fi these uh, Fighter levels wherever you think they would fit. So Barbarian level 2, we have access to Reckless Attack, which means we can attack with advantage, but enemies will also have advantage on us. Barbarian level 3, we get access to Wild Magic. This gives us Magic Awareness. So anyone within range can add their proficiency bonus to a saving throw against the spell. Okay, it is at this point I would throw in my level of Fighter. So I'm going to go Fighter level 1. This gives us access to Second Wind, and we have a bunch of fighting styles. For me, great weapon fighting. When you roll a 1 or a 2 on a damage die for an attack with a two-handed melee weapon, that die is re-rolled once. I think this is really good. Your other option would be Defense. Um, either or, I would take one of these two though. And we're going to stick with Fighter for level 2 to get Action Surge. And now we are home and clear to go with Barbarian. So, at level 6 we're going to take Barbarian level 4. This gives us access to a feat or a ability score improvement. Now, it is up to you what you want to do. You could take your ability score improvements and put it into Strength, and then respec when you get to level 12. It is entirely up to you. I am going to go with the assumption that that is what you will be doing, and you'll be following the item list uh, as you should. So, for this, we are going to take Great Weapon Master. When you land a critical hit or kill a target with a melee weapon attack, you can make another melee weapon attack as a bonus action that turn. Attacks with melee weapons you're proficient with and are wielding in both hands can deal an additional 10 damage at the cost of taking a minus 5 penalty to hitting your target. Coupled with advantage, and this can pay off very, very well. Okay, level 7, we now have access to our extra attack. So if we make an attack, if we take the attack action on our turn, we can then make another attack afterwards. And again, with our um, feet and our abilities, if we then kill the enemy, we can then do a second attack afterwards with our bonus action. We are now level 8, so Barbarian level 6 is where we get our bolstering magic. So we get our boon. You're an ally, receive a plus 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and ability checks. Probably won't be used that much because you'd rather use your actions for attacking, especially when you have two of them. But we do have bolstering magic, level 1 and level 2, and this allows us to either recover a spell slot of this level for ourselves or for our allies, and it is really, really powerful stuff. Barbarian level 7, we have Feral Instinct, which means we gain a plus 3 bonus to initiative and can't be surprised, and this is really good for pushing us up the initiative order. Level 10 overall, but Barbarian level 8, and we're going to take Savage Attacker. Again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, one of my favourite feats in the game. When making melee weapon attacks, you roll your damage dice twice and use the highest result. Barbarian level 9, we have Bolstering Magic level 3, and this means we can now recover a level 3 spell slot for one of our companions. And this is really good because there are some really, really potent and powerful level 3 spells, like things like Haste. Really, really good way of having another one of these on the table. We also get Brutal Critical. When you land a critical hit, you roll an extra damage die, as well as the normal additional critical dice. And then finally, Barbarian level 10, Unstable Backlash. While enraged, when you take damage or fail a saving throw, you trigger another wild magic effect that replaces the current one. And this could be really good if you're not happy with your wild magic effect. You could trigger this and get a new one going, but you might end up with one that you think is worse, or one that you think is better. It's a bit of a gamble, but that's what wild magic is. Okay, so that was our build. Now let's go over some items. Now, when it comes to items, ideally, you're going to want to take all the items from the House of Hope. 
Unfortunately, this is an end game Act 3 type area, and at this point in the game I am early Act 3, so I'm going to give you some alternative Act 3 equipment. But when it comes to your items, you are going to want the Gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength to boost your strength to 23. This will allow you to respec and take your feats like Great Weapon Master and Savage Attacker. You're going to want to take the Hell Dusk Armor and Boots, because they are by far the best armor in the game. And you're probably going to want to take the Amulet of Greater Health, just the healing capabilities. But when it comes to other equipment, I like the Bone Spike Helmet regardless. When you rage, any enemy in a 3 meter radius must exceed a Wisdom saving throw, or they'll take 2 to 8 Psychic damage. This is really powerful, even if they make the save, they still receive half damage, and thematically I think the idea of raging and having magic bursting out of you that damages enemies just fits. I also like the Flesh Melter Cloak. Whenever you take damage, the creature, if they're in melee range, takes 1 to 4 acid damage. The reason I really like this is, ideally you are going to be in the pocket, and you're going to be tanking as hard as you can, and DPSing, and this is just an extra layer of dealing damage when it's not even your turn. I would take this regardless of if you use this early Act 3 gear or the end gear stuff. I would also use the Killer Sweetheart, so when you attack a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical hit, and it replenishes once per long rest, so you get one guaranteed critical hit, which pairs really nicely with our feats and our abilities, along with the Ring of Regeneration. At the end of your turn, the ring activates and heals you for 1-4 to four hit points. I would use both of these regardless of if you're using the House of Hope armor and equipment, or this earlier stuff. Now, my alternatives for this would be the UNT Scale Mill. This has exotic materials, which allows you to add your dexterity modifier to your armor class. It also gives you a plus one bonus to your initiative rolls. Really good. The Disintegrating Nightwalkers, mainly because it gives you Misty Step, but it also means you can't be in webbed, entangled, or slip on ice or grease. As well as the Legacy of Masters, plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls. Now when it comes to a bow, I really like the, the Deadshot. Basically knocks our critical hit number down to a 19, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's just one extra number you need to roll. High percentage chance of really DPSing. And again, a lot of people will say the Baldur and Giant Slayer for a sword. I prefer the Sword of Chaos. Not only is it a big damage output, but on a hit, regain 1-6 to six hit points. And if your Barbarian is going to be your main tank, as it should be, this and the Ring of Regeneration is a maximum of 10 hit points back every single round. Really, really good. Now, let's go find some combat, and I'll show you this build in all its glory. Alright, we've started the combat, and as you can see, Karlak and our rogue are on the same initiative, which is perfect. So, we begin with our rage. Now, this will be a bonus action. And unfortunately, we're too far away for them to take the psychic damage, which kind of sucks. But there you go. Until the end of your rage, it deals an additional 1-6 to six force damage, which is amazing. So, let's start hitting these enemies. Big hit there. And another big hit. Overall, we have just done, I think that's like 100 damage in two hits. Um, let's have a little look on here. So that is 39 damage on the first hit, and 40 damage on the second. So that's 71 damage in two hits, which is insane. We could then also, if we wanted to, action surge, but we'll save this for our next round. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, we just took a hit, so we're going to use our Unstable Backlash. This will change our wild magic. And things are teleporting, apparently. I don't know what that one quite did, in all honesty, because I don't see much difference. Alright, and we are back. So, Executioner, this will be a guaranteed critical hit. With some huge damage. We can then smack again. And because we scored a critical hit, and because we killed them, we have access to a Great Weapon Master bonus action. So, I don't think we can quite reach though. Go on. And maybe we can. There you go, but that might have used our bonus action. It did. So in this case, with Action Surge. And Smack again. And there you go, that was our Reckless because we needed it. Okay, another unstable backlash. Let's see what we get. 
And there you go, we have difficult terrain now. And this will actually follow you around. Okay, I'm actually going to end our rage. And we're going to end our turn. So I want to show off the bone spike helmet. Or not. <laughs> Never mind, Karlak. Okay, let's now rage again. And unfortunately they saved, so we didn't get to do the psychic damage. Oh, at the end of your rage you can teleport each turn. That's what it does. Good to know. Well, let's finish the fight. And there you go. That is as easy and simple as this build is. It's just lots of DPS, lots of tanking, lots of hitting and action surge. And it's so much fun and powerful. Now bear in mind, if you do take the Gauntlets of Heal Giant Strength, your damage is going to be even higher because your strength is going to be higher. Um, so just bear that in mind. The damage you see here is going to be higher. And I believe the damage will also be higher if you take the Borderlands Giant Slayer. You just won't have the healing. So it's really a toss-up. You can be a bit more well-rounded or you can be just pure DPS. The choice is yours. If you've enjoyed, please drop the episode a like. It helps me amazingly. Let me know in the comments what you would change or what you'd do differently, what other items and whatnot. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, you'd like to. That'd also be amazing. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.